we'd like to get back to where Colorado is a swing state, a purple state. You know, you have mixed representation, so people have to work together and compromise and come out with good results for the people, not just stuff right. that satisfies the radical base of one party, which is what we're seeing. That's the governance we're getting in Colorado right now. So for that to happen, we have to have the best shot at the other party that's not in power actually winning a few elections. As the old Dylan song says, you've got to serve somebody. Even I have to serve somebody, and that would be the editorial editor of the Gazette Papers, Wayne Loggison. Wayne, that's thanks right. for being here. You're welcome. Employee. Am I doing okay? Yeah. As so a columnist? Far. So far. far. Yeah. Hanging no. by a thread? <laughs> that's right. You will just yeah. be a long, one in a long line You're of guys who fire me. One woke faux pas away <laughs> from, <laughs> from unemployment as yeah. usual. Obscurity, total obscurity. I, you've, yes. been, you've been doing politics in Colorado for as long as I've, I've known you. I um, wanted to talk to you just about the state, state of affairs. First, I want to talk to you about Indian names because this talk about woke stuff is driving me crazy. And um, so I live on a street in Boulder that's named after a tribal name. Uh, Arapaho? Well, there was Arapaho, there's uh, uh, Cherokee, there's Somali, some uh, Somali, yeah, Somalian. Yeah, yeah, and, Bo and Boulder misspells Arapaho, by right. the way. And there's Illini for the fighting Illini. Nobody knows that's actually a, a tribe. Right. Um, but now Colorado passed some law. Yeah, they passed now, a law last year. And now year. we can't have <clears throat> Indians. Right. And they created a commission on American Indian affairs, which was assigned the task of eliminating Indian tribal names, anything having to do with American Indian culture or history, uh, as, that are used as mascots in schools. Now we can debate the merits of uh, the Redskins or the Savages. There are some names that I think reasonable people can discuss whether this is, you know, a form of uh, mascotting that it, that 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 is, that is, is it derogatory. Derogatory. Yeah. Now they've taken Redskins. It. Redskins is. I mean, you wouldn't yeah. call the Washington football team. Uh, the Washington Negroes, would you? I mean, that would be. Uh, I bet an, there was a team. You remember up in Fort Probably Collins? Probably was at one point. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, up in Fort Collins, there was an intramural team called the uh, uh, the Caucasians or the Whiteies, uh -huh. and they were and their team. They just had these white guys on their. It was really <laughs> funny, and they were there for years and years and years. <laughs> well, we used to have be able to have a sense of humor in this right. country. We, that that That's you gone. wouldn't dare do that today. No, but but they've. This has been carried to an extreme to where now uh, something that I don't think most people, probably not even most American Indians, knew was part of American Indian heritage, which is the Thunderbirds. There are 10 schools last week that the commission said are out of compliance with the law because their mascots are Thunderbirds. What is a Thunderbird? One of them, the school is called Thunder Mountain. Uh, you know, and there's another one where the school is, has thunder in its name, so it would seem fitting that you, you would have thunder. Are you thunder mixed up with a with a Disneyland ride or no. a Thunder Mountain? <laughs> so wait a second, what is a Thunderbird? It's a it's a symbol of it's a is that is that the Indian it symbol? Exist. Or now he's, you say a Native American, Native American symbol, American Indian or Native right. American. I prefer and, and American. And it's a two dimensional. Um, Think of a bird, right? That's right. Yeah, it's it's just a mythical it does, it bird. Doesn't, it, doesn't it doesn't exist. exist. No, like the Jayhawk does not exist either. The, really? the the mascot of the national championship basketball team does not exist. It's it's merely a symbol. Same thing with uh, Notre Dame's Fighting Irish. There are no Irish that fight. No, that would never that would happen. be myth. That would. <laughs> so uh, for some reason, that has never been deemed offensive. The Fighting Irish. I would think that some Irish people would have would, would take funny. exception to that, but. Because it, it's a stereotype, um, but the but the Thunderbirds and so you especially know, their symbol, you know that that, that symbol of fighting oh, yeah, or, yeah. Or a leprechaun yeah. ready to <laughs> you know, old old Queen of Roxbury rules. They may as well have a a, a beer in one hand, you know, and a fist in the other. That would I, I fulfill like that. the full yeah. stereotype. But Thunderbirds, yeah, we can't have that. It's a twenty five thousand dollar per month fine 
if they don't get rid of Thunderbirds. And, and who chooses? You said there's a commission. Commission. Who chooses who's on the commission of what we're supposed to be so offended by that a school district, a government agency, has to pay another government agency twenty five grand a month if they like their name? I can't tell you the exact dynamics of how the committee members are appointed. I'm sure it's, uh, it's probably gubernatorial and legislative. I'm guessing, but I, I can't speak to that expertly. I know that uh, they want $25,000 a month. One of the school superintendents from the Sangro de Cristo school, uh, school District called the commission, talked to a commissioner, called the attorney general's office, and he reports that he was told, he said, we've got all this stuff with this mascot on it. How do we comply in any kind of timely fashion? And they said, well, you can drape trophies that have the Thunderbird on it. The children can turn their T-shirts inside out. Their uniforms can be worn inside out. And they kept, you know, others were pressing this issue, so they gave them a year now. They have a year to right, get so into compliance. so when you go into a school and you have that glass <clears throat> trophy case going back wherever, and whenever they won a ping-pong tournament in 1948, you know, that's the, it's there. Yeah, So that's they're going to have to, now. what, duct tape everyone that says yes. Thunderbirds on it. You cannot display a Thunderbird a if you want to be in compliance with the law. exist. Right. There's no such thing as a Thunderbird. That's correct, except that we do have the Air Force Thunderbirds who fly every year at the, right. this time of year at the Air Force Academy graduation. Now, what we fully expect to have happen, you know, we discuss this on the editorial board, this movement will not stop with elementary schools. If you can't have an elementary school in Grand Junction, you know, that has Thunderbirds as its, as its mascot. How can you have one of the country's premier, you know, yeah, flying right. acrobatic F-16 uh, squadrons named this offensive? And how is it derogatory? I get Redskins. It's I get not maybe derogatory. even Savages. <clears throat> but yeah, yeah. I don't get how. Well, they've crossed a line from... Now, my, my belief is that this, they've become drunk with power and control. They can change things. They can have an, a, a permanent influence on society. And for I mean, the is, sake of doing Soviet. that, this is you know, right. Was Leningrad to now Stalingrad? You know, kind of. Let's let's craziness. scour. Let's scour the culture of. Let, you know, this is this is um, cultural cleansing of things that that are proud symbols, that are important symbols of Native American history and Native American culture. And we're just going to erase that to serve a woke agenda and, and to indulge power and control, there is nothing offensive about Thunderbirds. Now what they're saying is that it is appropriation. It belongs to ancient Indian tribes and therefore you can't have it. But first of all, I don't think most people ever knew that when they used Thunderbirds. It's uh, And also I don't think they can have that. For instance, Right. Uh, years ago, there was a, um, a, a brewery, I think it was in New York or someplace on the east, a small brewery, and they, and they were going to put out um, Geronimo Ale or something like that. And somebody said, well, you can't do that. He's, he was a person. He's a, and so they were going to pass a law that said, you cannot name an alcoholic beverage after a dead historic person. Uh -huh. All right. And it got this close to passing until... Sam Adams Brewery, the largest <laughs> American-owned brewery, everything else is a multinational now, said, uh, excuse, I think it was in Massachusetts, and they said, yeah. excuse me? And they go, oh, yeah, we, we, we better not do that. So it's, it's the same, same thing. Uh, you can't, Thunderbird is not owned, even if, it's, even if it's part of Native American folklore. Right. Nobody has... A trademark on it, like you cannot trademark the name Sam Adams. You can do Sam Adams Ale, but not Sam Adams. It's also a little bit insulting to suggest that all or most American Indians are insulted by their own cultural... Uh, instead of honored. Right, instead of honored. I mean, this is in no way, like you said, it's in no way derogatory. So... I can't see any any rationale for this, and I think a lot of the public's going to feel that way. And it'll be interesting to see if these schools actually comply, because from what I from my research, I don't see that the state really has any authority to enforce this 
or to collect the $25,000 fines. That's $300,000 in a year that isn't going to students. Uh, teachers who deserve more money, uh, the, that's, the public is not going to stand for that. Are you suggesting that these schools <clears throat> disobey? Yes. Just that, and then what will happen? Um, I don't know what will happen. Certainly people will, there are people who will try to bring them into compliance. But again, I don't know where they have the authority to do that, to go into a local school district. Now, they could deprive state money from them. There's, there are ways that they can get their money, that they can exact this pain on the, but I on think the schools. But is, they would but take is the whole that really what the public wants? Right. right. Is, that, is that really what... And, you, and on this one, you know, if, if you were going to um, call it the <clears throat> Cherokee whatever, or Comanche whatever, you can go to the tribe and say, excuse me, Cherokee Nation is... Is it okay if we do that? I think right. the University of Florida does that with Seminoles. Sure, and, you know, and, and and they go, no, we're honored. We'll do that. And they, you know, there were here, even Indi American Indian tribes that supported keeping the Redskins in yeah. Washington D.C. There, there was support among uh, yeah. tribes, at least one. I know that. But, um, but how do you go? Who has the authority out of all the Native American uh, tribes to say no? Thunderbird is okay, we give you... You can't. There's no... It's not the name of a tribe. No, it's not. And if we're going to go there, look, one of the schools that has to eliminate Thunderbird is Cheyenne Mountain Elementary School. That's named after a tribe. That right. is appropriation of an Indian tribe's name. This well, is and, merely a symbol that some Indians... In the springs, uh, Cheyenne valued. Mountain is, is an important name. For Cheyenne Mountain, there's a Cheyenne Mountain Resort. And the name right. is used ubiquitously. Exactly, and there are a lot of other schools. Well, not a lot. There are a few among the ten that have Indian names in the school or the school district. Do you think name. any of these schools will be strong enough to go? No, I force don't us. know. I kind of doubt it, but yeah, it would be nice to see it. I think it should be up to the school board. Government educators are not what I would say conflict friendly. They don't like conflict, no, including that's something true. like this, which which goes right down to, to to the name. And a lot of educators will agree with it. Uh, not a, you know some yeah. will, but the but you have to consider that there is a movement afoot in this country, and particularly in Colorado, of parents taking back the schools. Colorado, Florida, a few right. other states, and we saw that in the last election, where new school majorities were elected on the promise that these schools belong to the community, to the families in the community, and we're taking them back, and we're going to run them from the school board. Whereas when, in, in more normal times, school boards are generally elected Caretakers. largely. Well, and they're kind of elected by the, nobody cares, so the, 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 uh, union. the unions are able to determine who gets elected. But after, put money a, into after it. a year and a half of lockdowns, when parents saw what was really going on right. in school because they saw it on their kid's computer screen, yes. that was the fuel for the fire. This is one of the let, things let's, the pandemic Let's take changed. that and, and yeah. go, go a few <clears throat> steps in the future. I don't know if you're a Simpsons fan. So you mean as in the, the TV the TV show. cartoon yeah, thing? Cartoon. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, everybody I've knows Homer and yeah. Bart. And who was the Indian guy who owned the Quickie Mart? I don't know, but that was a, that was quite the stereotype. Right. It reminds me of uh, Joe Biden saying you have to have a slight Indian accent to go into a 7-Eleven right. in Delaware. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> that character was canceled because, um, thank you very much, yes. and so he, he is no longer on the show. That, can, that is canceled. Yet, as, as, uh, as a proud Italian-American, a yes. Dago wop. Um, <laughs> Can uh, you say that on TV? Yes. 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 Okay. I'm a proud. Yeah. I'm a proud guinea. To, I get to make fat jokes. Yeah. I'm. I'm a proud guinea. And so they have mobsters on The Simpsons, and those mobsters are, of course, Italians. Italian yeah. stereotypes. They have a pizza guy. Oh no, it's a pizza. Da, da, da. And right. you know, so the stereotypes of Italians is fine because Italians used to be not white, and now they are white. And so now that's okay. By the way, I love those Italian stereotypes. You know They're what I don't like? Th 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 this, this brings up a question I have. Why is it that, you know, we, they were pressured to cancel Beavis and Butthead, and you just gave an example yeah. on uh, The Simpsons. South Park does anything it wants. It stereotypes that's everyone. Beautiful. There are no exceptions. There are no boundaries. And they get away with it. Because they're 
funny. They are funny. They are funny, yeah. and they're direct, and that's their point. And Comedy Central, whoever is producing them now, um, um, would never would never cancel it. And most importantly, they're saving Casa Bonita. That's what uh, really yeah. matters in the scope of things. But the uh, the Indian uh, stereotype that you're talking about is interesting because Indians are very successful in this country, more successful than white people. Mm -hmm. If you consider Indians, I'm, and I'm talking about that. people from India, not white, um, they are... No, say it the right you, way. If you You're call talking them. about dot, not feather. Yeah, Indians. there you go. There you go. go. Okay, got it. That'll get, that'll get clipped <laughs> so, out. <laughs> but no, they're, 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 you know, they, if you look at um, the socioeconomic status of Indians in general as a demographic, they are more successful than white men. The largest amount of first-generation millionaires are immigrants. Yes. You know, uh, black people from the Ivory Coast uh, have a way of, in one generation, uh, building up wealth. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it's amazing that people come to this nation, don't know the language, don't know the people, don't know the laws, don't know the customs, and within one generation, see opportunity. They see opportunity and they just start, I mean, immigrants do. Immigrants. A lot of yes. immigrants do, and they just start going for it. Whereas someone who's born here with all the creature comforts of an American middle class person and up takes all of that for granted. They don't see it as opportunity. What, no, what, we may, what, what, what an immigrant may come here and see as opportunity, we see as an obstacle, perhaps. Uh, I tell you what, let's, let's switch gears. Uh, um, let's talk about a few other great uh, <clears throat> issues that going on in Colorado. Your paper has been, let me put it this way, Fentanyl nuts. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the fentanyl gazette. Yes. Why so? Because this is a crisis and people, are, the, the media and the establishment do not see it as such. It was just confounding. I couldn't, I, I, I don't even have the words to explain watching the legislature uh, fiddle away all of that time. Uh, you know, fiddling as Rome burns, so to speak, to use an old cliche. But, if, I, if I understand uh, the situation correctly, a year ago or two years ago, the legislature decriminalized small amounts of fentanyl, so no, that it wasn't so wasn't that it wasn't no that it wasn't it wasn't a felony, and so this was so that police could focus in on actual drug dealers, not the poor guy who has some. Because he is hooked on it. Right. Well, what the legislature did and what the governor signed, and I think he realizes this now, uh, in 2019 was phenomenally stupid. Um, it was the brainchild of a Republican representative from Colorado Springs named Shane Sandridge. Shane Sandridge is proud of this bill. He wrote it. He managed to convince Democrats to join him in this. And what it did was it decriminalized all Schedule One and Two drugs up to four grams. Now, that's one thing if you're talking about cocaine or heroin. That's still a lot of cocaine or heroin. I don't think you would want your children going out and possessing four grams of heroin. Depends on the street depends. value. <laughs> There's that. And it depends what they're doing that day, right? right. Yeah. Right. Their behavior. The question no. is, are <clears throat> they turning a profit on it? That's yes. All, yeah. And are they sharing? Right. No. But four grams, so four grams is a lot, but four grams of fentanyl is enough to kill at least 2,000 people. Some physicians will tell you up to eight or 9,000 people because it is that deadly. It is not a drug. It is a poison when it's used on the streets. So if somebody uses four grams, consumes four grams of fentanyl, is that a death sentence? Oh, or you wouldn't even, you'd be dead long before you got to a, a half a gram or a quarter of a gram, you would be dead instantly. You, the amount of fentanyl it takes to kill you, if you put it in a teaspoon, it, 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 it's about a tenth of the tea, teaspoon. It's a few grains of white powder. And <clears throat> so this stuff is getting used. It's, it's, it, That's why we're having so many fentanyl deaths, so many overdoses. While the homeless population is getting worse. Right. So many things. And so, so what's really sad is we, we've lost a couple of one-year-old babies who just simply, they didn't even try to ingest anything. It just was on a, a, a table, and they came in contact with it. People have died giving mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation to fentanyl victims. Uh, this stuff is getting into cocaine. Uh, you, we had five people 
I think it was in Commerce City, dropped dead yeah. within seconds of each other because they were doing a line of cocaine, just trying to have fun on a Sunday afternoon. So your editorial and, page, and to be honest, the whole Gazette has been following this, and you've been editorializing that uh, that law needs to be changed. This was the hot topic throughout well, the session. A, yeah. At the end of the session, what happened? It was fixed. Not, 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 it no, was completely, no, it was, no, it really it was, was not fixed. and totally um, fixed. No, it, it was not fixed. Well, I read we it. We got a Band-Aid and, a, and, and an excuse. We, we, we got some sort of song and dance about we address the issue, now let's move on. But it definitely was not fixed because uh, it's still, you could, now you, first of all, that, 19, that 2019 law made Colorado the most attractive place to be in the country if you are a fentanyl dealer. And they really do, you know, we've talked to drug dealers. Yes, we come to Colorado because there's no risk. The, the reward is high. The risk is low. At most, we're going to get a slap on the risk. We're not even going to spend the night in jail. And Four to, grams, to, to, I to can draw, sell that to thousands of right. people. So to, to, um, to draw that out, four grams, I might have a stockpile a hundred, a thousand times more than that. But all I need to do as a dealer is carry four grams or less and if I get busted, I'm not a dealer. You're not in, tr you're not in any serious trouble. Right. You don't have a felony. Uh, you have a misdemeanor, which you can plead down to, to a petty offense or less. And so what we talked to one dealer uh, who showed up at the legislature, and he was no longer a dealer. He was a recovering addict. He said four grams is an insane amount. That's more than enough to deal and make a lot of money. But if we needed more, we'd put four or five people in the car and each of us had four grams. Then we had 20 grams right. in a house and we're all within our rights without the fear was, of a felony. What was the Band-Aid? What did they do? I, At the end of the day, what is it the My best recollection sign? is this is uh, now we have, um, you can have up to one gram without, uh, without committing a felony. And... Up to four grams if you can say that you didn't know that it was fentanyl. Now, I understand the philosophy behind that. That's, uh, I went to buy cocaine, and it was laced with fentanyl, and I didn't know it, and I got caught. Good All thing right. I got caught because I might have died if I have snorted it. Right. Um, that, that's the philosophy behind it. We don't want to hold people uh, felony accountable for something they didn't know. Another, but, but the problem with that is... Anyone, as any DA will tell you, it makes it impossible to, it, we're right back where we started. It's impossible to enforce Before laws so. against it. You, you, can't, you can't get a felony conviction. All you have to do is get, any flunky attorney will go in and say he didn't know. She didn't know. Um, the worst part about this bill, perhaps, is the Good Samaritan element of it. Again, I understand the philosophy. This is, um, I give you a pill, and I say that it is uh, a Percocet. This happens a lot right. because they they are selling street Percocet. Looks like a Percocet. Looks like a uh, you know something looks the doctor like would give you for pain. Right. Yeah, right. and it's actually fentanyl. Uh, this goes on all the time, and sometimes you're lucky and you get whatever high or buzz it is you want from your Percocet. That's not really Percocet. You don't know the difference, and you survive. Oftentimes, it has too much fentanyl in it because these drug dealers don't know what they're doing or they don't care. And you drop dead. This is happening almost every day in Colorado. And um, if I do that, so I give you, we're at a party, I give you, say, Wayne, I want a Percocet. Oh, I got a Percocet. I give you a Percocet. It's laced with too much fentanyl, which is easy to happen. And but you I drop didn't dead. know it was. You, 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 Huh? But if I gave it to you, but I didn't know there was fentanyl. Oh well, that that's so. So you're you're fine if because right. you didn't know. But let's say you drop dead, which is not uncommon. You drop dead. Now there's a good Samaritan clause in this new law that says I cannot be prosecuted for killing you as long as I cooperate with law enforcement. If I call nine one one and I cooperate with law enforcement, I am immune from prosecution. And the, the philosophy behind this is we don't want John to fall on the floor and nobody's going to render assistance right. because I'm afraid. I'm not going to render assistance because I don't want to get arrested. So that makes sense, right? Well, what's the problem with that? Let's say that you want someone wants to kill his wife. <laughs> and he says, here, 
darling, this will help with your back or your neck pain tonight. And he slips her a Percocet, Percocet, and it's laced with fentanyl and wife dies. Call the cops, cooperate with the investigation, and what have you done? You've created, you have just committed a perfect murder. Nobody's talking about that, but I have talked to prosecutors and nobody can prove me wrong. Fascinating. They do hey, not dispute that. Before we run out of time, the other thing that's been happening on your pages lately are endorsements. Now, yes. Endorsements usually happen in the fall. We're going to endorse this candidate or that candidate, usually yeah. a Republican versus a uh, Democrat. <clears throat> Gazette has weighed in on important primary races in the Republican Correct. Party. Now, there's no real primaries in uh, the, the Democratic, Democratic side, yeah. except for the new 8th Congressional District. Yeah. But you, you have made strong cases um, for Joe O'Day, mm -hmm. for Pam Anderson, Anderson. Yeah. and I believe for Heidi Ganahl. Heidi Ganahl, yes. All right, so these are, these, are, yeah. these are races that are still very much up in the air, and not only Republicans, but unaffiliated will be able to vote in the June primary on this. Why did you choose these folks? Why well, the did reason, do that? The reason we chose to weigh in during the primary, which we don't always do, is that 100% of Colorado government is controlled by Democrats. They have every statewide office except for one seat on the statewide seat on the uh, Board of Regents, which is Heidi Ganahl. Other than that, it's one. they have both Senate uh, seats, yeah, right. they have everything. The House, the, the, House, the, the, the Senate, Senate, Senate the, the, governor, the, the governor, the governor, yeah. AG. The, so um, we don't think that's, we wouldn't think that was good if it were the other party either. We don't think, you know, we'd like to get back to where Colorado is a swing state, a purple state. You know, you have mixed representation, so people have to work together and compromise and come out with good results for the people, not just stuff right. that satisfies the radical base of one party, which is what we're seeing. That's the governance we're getting in Colorado right now. So for that to happen, we have to have the best shot at the other party that's not in power actually winning a few elections, which is not terribly likely you, right, in you Colorado. You just said winning the best likely shot. Are you telling me these endorsements are because these are the candidates your board thinks can win in the fall? That is a or, big part or of Or is it, these are the people you want to see in office? It's a little of both, but uh, one of our major considerations is, can this person win? Or is this a f exercise in futility? We're not going to endorse someone, even if we agree with everything that person stands for, if we think it's an exercise in futility. There's no money raised, there's no real campaign going on, there's no name recognition and no effort to change that. That would be a waste. Well, then of I tell you what, let's let's real fast. Let's let's go through a couple <clears> of these. The top of the the ballot will be the United States Senate. Yes. All right, and so we've got that's the Republicans' best shot at a statewide office. Right. So we've got Joe O'Day, who is not what I would call a hardcore Republican. This is right. a guy who is a moderate on abortion. He's 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 not. He, this is this is not a hardcore conservative versus a hardcore conservative. Right, uh, Ron Hanks, who announced that he's running by taking a gun to what he said was a uh, um, uh, a voting machine. I forget uh, uh, Dominion, Dominion voting machine. Voting machine. It, was, it was it was a fax machine or something. <laughs> right, right. But yeah, uh, you get the point. Yeah, that's going to do very well with a lot of the Republican base. Sure. So you're saying that this guy doesn't have name recognition or that he can't win. Well, that does really well with the Republican base. Because neither one of them has name recognition at this point. Joe O'Day is spending a Got, considerable yeah. amount of money on commercials. Agreed. So he is getting... Um, no, the, the, the problem with that is uh, when, you, when you run a campaign like that and, you're gonna, and he's going to run on, uh, you know, let's, let's re-litigate the 2020 election. Regardless of how you feel about the 2020 election and anything that went on there, that is not a winning message. Nobody is going to, the vast majority of Colorado voters who are in the middle, who are unaffiliated, are not going to be inspired by that. You think that's going back to 2020? You think that's it's impossible an for Hanks to win in a general? Yes, I think it's impossible. Now, because of what he does to um, appeal to the base of the Republican Party, he did very well at the Republican Assembly. Or yep. convention, whatever you Assembly, want to call he, it. Assembly, he won, he won it. Right. He chased away all and the others. And that's how you do that. That's how, and then you have to rush to the middle if you want to actually win 
in the primary, and then you have to even rush more to the middle if you want to win in the general. That's just the way it works. I'm not saying I like it, but that's the fact. And he's not, we, we think that of the two, Joe O'Day has the best chance of actually beating Michael Bennett in the general election for all the reasons you just stated. Did you, I don't, did you, did you sit down with both <clears throat> of them or did, was this something you just observed? No, we sat down with one of them. We sat down with Joe O'Day. We, we, there was, we didn't want to waste anybody's time. There was no way, uh, there were too many board members who were not um, inclined to support Hanks. Just straight out. Right, and it doesn't have anything to do with, w w look, we think he's a good man and, and, and good on the issues, on a lot of issues. We just don't think this is a winning campaign strategy. Talk about the governor's race. Yeah. So um, going up against Polis would be tough. His popularity is off the charts. He's got more money than God. Right. Um, but still, we have two candidates, and one of, one of them is going to go up against him. You chose Heidi Ganahl over uh, Greg Lopez. Yes. Why? Because Heidi is a statewide office holder. Greg has been the mayor of a, of a small city, and that's, that's nothing against Greg. Uh, but again, we think that Heidi is running a better campaign, more of a campaign. Um, Greg has been running for four years, and we have not seen or heard much from him. And uh, we just don't, we think of the two, um, both are good on the issues. Uh, we think of the two, she has the best chance of winning a Senate seat. And that is, that is, Go, the, that, that, that is the absolute best uh, chance Republican Secretary of State, you came out and said Pam Anderson is is the one. The, oh, again, this is very much like I, I mistook. I mean, I mean, we said hi, uh, Heidi. Heidi for governor. Said Senate seat for governor. For governor yeah, right. no, they don't have. But yeah, to, right. for Secretary of State, um, you've got Tina Peters, who's under some legal issues. Uh, it very much reminds me of the the Ron Hanks situation. Right. Is that the same? It's the same thing. Tina Peters is very appealing to the hardcore base the grassroots base of the Republican Party, the people who show up at caucuses and assemblies, and um, no, nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But I, we don't see any chance of her winning any kind of support in the middle uh, among the unaffiliated. So there's just not, we, we don't see any benefit in you know, getting behind a candidate simply because maybe we agree with them on a whole lot of issues, um, but getting behind someone who just doesn't really have a chance to win. That doesn't make any, any real sense. It's, it's, it's kind of a waste of our resources. Do you think Republicans can win? I'll leave it at this question. I think in November in Colorado, can Republicans win? You've been doing this a long time. <laughs> if they've ever had a chance to win in recent years, yeah. this is it. Uh, they could screw it up. And uh, I think that the governor's race is a real tall order because of what you said. The, the, the incumbent is relatively popular and has unlimited resources to spend without having to raise a dime. That's going to be a tough one for them, though Heidi is a good candidate. So we'll see. I think Republicans have a very good shot at winning the Senate race because as it stands, Michael Bennett is underwater by one point against any generic Republican <clears throat> who has no name recognition. And when he ran for president, <clears throat> he didn't reach 1% in polling in Colorado. He has very <laughs> low name recognition, and he has, uh, I think people have a perception that he really hasn't done a lot for the state. Whether that's fair or not, I think Why that perception is Why these races are important, and we'll leave it here, <clears throat> is... From my point of view, I worry about the Colorado legislature. Yeah. And uh, I want people to come down and vote these lower ticket, um, these lower seats. Right. And if people are turned off at the top and go, ah, eh, then, then we might not win down below. I have a lot of the same worries. And I, you know, I know Greg Lopez. I think he's a good man. Yes. I, I know uh, Ron Hanks. I would love for him to be senator. Sure. Um, now, I think he... Um, um, no, Ron, we Ron have nothing be against Ron. Right. Uh, I just, I don't see the path to victory. Right. And I don't want to hurt those candidates that go farther, that are down ticket. Yeah, exactly. Right. We've, we've got to win one of the chambers of the legislature. Last question. I mean, we, meaning Republicans, I am a Republican, but I'm, I'm saying in, in the interest of balance, in the interest, it, the, the goal 
for us is not just to elect Republicans, but to restore balance to this state. And that's what we need to happen for that to occur. Both the Denver Gazette <clears throat> and the uh, Colorado Springs Gazette or uh, in Colorado politics has just such a deep editorial section. Yes. Daily editorials, <clears throat> like we used to see in the Denver Post and the Rocky Mountain News, just daily editorials on local issues, which are so crucial. Uh, and, and a wealth of, of columnists, but there's been one thing that has been burning, uh, I think every reader has been asking, and you're getting a lot of pressure, when are the columnists for the Gazette going to get sizable pay raises? This seems to be one of the <laughs> biggest issues. <clears throat> well, as soon as John Caldera starts giving me reasonable <laughs> checks in return for coming up here to do this show. <laughs> when then we'll start talking about, yeah, that's. Listen, payback I, is, uh, yeah, there, there's, there's a little kickback is, we, we know how this works. Let, you, let's talk after the we'll, show we'll a little more about Wayne, the Thanks for everything you do. Appreciate it. <laughs> hey, thank you, John. It's always fun. If you enjoyed that conversation, by all means, click one of these other great programs. We have the best conversations with the most fascinating Coloradans. And subscribe to our channel. Just click down below and hit that little bell button too. You don't want to miss a single show.